This week we are taking a look at If I Had Possession of a Judgment Day. This is a Robert Johnson original um, covered by John Hammond, um, who is a fantastic blues man in his own right, but um, whose father was obviously instrumental in um, first releasing Robert Johnson's original recordings. So the young John Hammond was granted privileged access to hear um, these early recordings probably one of the first people to hear them, you know. So it's no surprise that he went on to be uh, such a great blues man and such a great exponent of uh, Robert Johnson's guitar styles. Now this recording, um, he's doing his own thing with this. It's got a bit of a Howlin' Wolf kind of feel to the band arrangement. Um, and he's playing an open E a lot of the time on this one. I think there are two guitars, probably a standard tune guitar and an open tune guitar. So what I'll do first off is I'm gonna run you through how to play the slide guitar part it's pretty simple, and then I'll show you the uh, regular guitar part as well. So, what you need to do is get your guitar, if you're going to play slide, you need to get that guitar into an open tuning. In this case, we're going to be an E-flat, a Vestipole tuning. So that means E-flat, B-flat, E-flat, G, B-flat, E-flat. Okay, so basically just open D tuning, but up to E-flat. Okay, and that means that when you strum the guitar, you're going to have an open chord right off the bat like this. Okay, so that's your open E flat. And in the blues, of course, we're going to use a, a one chord, which is this. And that can also be found at the 12th fret, right across here. All of those strings in a straight line. That's the great thing about the open tune, everything's in a straight line, right? So when we look at these strings, in the key that we're in, we've got root, five, root, third, five, root. Okay? So we've got three roots, two fives, and only one third. Okay? That'll be useful to think about later. Okay. So when we're going to change chords, we're going to move to the four chord, and we're just going to bar at the fifth fret. You want to be, wherever your dot is, you want to be this side of the dot. So right on where the fret is, is where the notes live. So sliding in from a fraction below, you get this sound. Just hitting the bass strings there. Catch the other ones. Now when you, when you do play all of the strings, or if you do play all of the strings, it's... Um, to get the best sound out of the slide, so this is kind of messy. It's easier at first, but it's uh, not a pure tone. So what you want to do is just let that index finger rest there behind. What I like to do is I like to stack my fingers like this. I put my middle finger on the slide and then my index finger slightly below so that it's level with the string. It needs to be level with the base of the slide, just this tip of the finger. What that's going to do is it's going to touch the string and mute it and allow the pure tone of the string to ring out. So you do that all the time, just get in the habit of casually resting that finger behind the slide. I will occasionally do away with that if I want to create a more rough, harsh kind of sound. Okay, so we've got the one chord, we've got the four chord, and then we've got the five chord, which is just a tone above, up at the seventh fret. Okay. Five, back to the one. And the only other interval we're really going to think about today is that of the flattened third. Okay. So the major third is right there on the fourth fret. So that's going to occur anywhere on the fourth fret on those root note strings. So here. Okay, but we want the minor third, we want a flatted third, so we want this one at the third fret. Same here on what would normally be your D string, and on your low E string. Okay, so that's going to come in useful in this. So, <clears throat> with that in mind, Let's take a look at the main riff that recurs on the one chord throughout the piece. And um, it begins with just a thump on the open string on beat one. Okay, and then we're going to do this little move.
Okay, so after you do the thumb, what I like to do is have my index and thumb ready. I put my thumb on the bass and the index on what would normally be the D string, like so. And then on beat one, then you go into this little twiddle. Okay, so once again. Okay, and once you've done that, just hit the open A string, which is now B flat, right here with the thumb. Slide on, third fret. Slide up to the root of the fifth fret. Like so. And finish with the root again. So you get this. As we go through that a number of times, um, on the intro it's three times, the rest of the time I think it's just twice. Excuse me, got a cup of tea on the go here. We're always coming out of that and we're going up to the four chord with the entrance of the vocals, all right? So as you come out of that riff, you want to just time this move to bring about the four chord change. And you don't need to play the full four chord because it's going to sound too, too crazy, too much noise. We just want to play one string. So because we're already playing this string as part of that riff, we're going to play this one here, which is um, in, in, the, in the tonic, in the one chord, it's the five, right? Well, that doesn't change. When we move up to the four chord, it's going to be the five, not the root of the four chord. So it's going to give you that sound. So if, for instance, the bassist is playing the root note here, you're going to be doing well to be dropping that 5 in there. If you wanted to play the root note, it would be the string below or the string above. Both of those are root note strings, so you get that. I do use that root note occasionally, but not all the time. I use it more as a, a note to jump out of the progression, if I want to be heard a bit more clearly. But a lot of the time I'll just use that five, so. And then up to the five chord on the same string. We're on the normally your A string. using what would normally be your D string, the third string down, as I come out of that five, four, and then here, onto that minor third, back onto the root. Okay, now that is the main meat and potatoes of this whole tune. Um, by simplifying things to a single string, you can um, you can then later on in the song you can start to add extra notes. So I start by adding a pinch of two strings. So you go one time on the one string, two, three, four, and then two strings. Okay, and that adds a little depth to it. And if you're sitting in behind the other guitarist, or just playing with the band. It's real pleasant, you know. Okay. Now that's that's all you really need to know for the slide. So work on the technique of muting, follow the chord changes, and get used to the the form which is, in this case, it's like an eight bar blues, so it's quite a short form. It's real easy. Just play along and keep it simple like that. Um, and when you do feel like you want to take a little solo, just play that stuff, you know, like follow the chord changes. 
Um, whenever I'm soloing on the slide like this, I'm not really deviating from the progression very much. I'm, I'm sticking with the changes and I'm just adding something to it. So I might do something like this. <laughs> playing everything I was playing before I'm just adding a little a little flourish here and there and up at the 12th fret you can find a lot of good stuff for soloing up there but bear in mind it's it's mostly focused around the one chord but you could pretty much hang out there for a while as well over any of these chords because your five is contained in there quite nicely. There's your four back to the root. So you've got all the things you need there around that one chord, you know. play around with that. I'm going to switch guitars and I'll show you the basics on the regular guitar. Cheers. <laughs> All right. So I got my uh, regular guitar now and I'm tuned to E flat standard. So just drop everything down by semitone. We'll get straight into it. So, exactly the same as we did before, we're gonna start with that root note. And then down here on the D string, we're gonna do a little. And then back to the root note. Pull offs, pull off here on the A string, root note. Okay, and then we go back. A little hammer on to the open D string. And then finishing off with a little, so that's a little pull off from the second fret to the minor third, get a little bend and out. So all of that real slow. the basic gist of the riff. A couple of little things I throw in are um, so there pulling off from the B flat instead of the B. It's a subtle difference but sounds kind of cool for a variation. Sometimes I throw in that little extra beat there. Yeah. Rattling. That string is rattling there quite a bit, but I give it a thunk because obviously I've dropped my guitar down to E flat. It's optimized for playing in standard tuning. And this is something you may encounter whether you've got a standard tuning option or whether you try to play the slide guitar on your regular guitar. Fortunately, the um, the Hondo, the ES335 copy over there that I use for slide, um, it has an easily adjustable bridge. So what I did was I raised that bridge up a few mil and strung it with 12s, which are a gauge heavier than I normally use on my regular guitar. So if you're in a position to do that or you already have a guitar set up for slide, you're gold. Um, if not, I would recommend you know just getting a slightly heavier gauge of strings um, and changing the setup if, if you so inclined does it really make a lot of difference and make it a lot more enjoyable for playing slide but most of you will be fine to drop tune your guitar if you can put up with a little rattle here and there um, in standard tuning into E flat standard it shouldn't be too much of a problem all right so once we've played the main riff in this song um, just like 
we did with the slide. We gotta we gotta keep the guitar quite down low. We don't want to be like taking up all that space. We want to really be out of the way, actually. So the name of the game with this tune is dropping in on the riff every time it comes up on the one chord, and then as we come out of that riff. to the four chord. subject let me just run you through the another way to play the riff so I was playing it here in the first position we can do it up here as well okay so again starting off with the root note and then we're going to pull off here at the seventh fret A string and again on the next string from the B to the A open root note so that little bit Okay, now once we've nailed that, we do a hammer on to the B, landing on the D down here. And then you're going to slide from the B to A, down to the G, and off. Pretty simple, but it just has a slightly different sound to the other one, so you can switch between the two or you can pick one that you prefer. It's really up to you. So that, that pretty much covers how to play the nuts and bolts of this tune. The name of the game is to stay out of the way with the chords, you know, just do something real minimal. If you just hit one note, that's cool. Keep it really low down and don't crowd the mix, all right? And the solo is, there's nothing out of the ordinary here. It's just pentatonic blues stuff. So I'm gonna leave that up to you guys to come up with your own expression of it. Have a listen to John, John Hammond's version. Um, have a listen to my interpretation on the backing tracks we've made for you and come up with your own interpretation of that using the stuff you already got. Okay, have fun, practice hard. See you next week, cheers. <laughs>